Now out of uh, Los Angeles area, we do have a live pursuit going on of a uh, uh, pol police uh, going here. The suspect we are learning uh, could be possibly uh, wanted for a murder a suspect there. So let's list. We are going to uh, really do the play by play for you right here on live now from Fox. Viewer discretion is always advised everyone. We're still in the LAX area. My pilot, Dylan, today definitely trying to keep with this the best we can. But, of course, we have the LAPD helicopter nearby as well, so it's going to make it difficult. Uh, I'd just like to get a cleaner shot of where we're at right now, but you can see that pursuit continuing right now. LAPD definitely staying behind it. They're not going to let this thing go. How they're going to bring this to an end, though, that is the big question. Of course, they cannot use that pit maneuver because they said, as you mentioned early on, attempt murder suspect, but possibly armed in they don't want to have a situation where that vehicle is pointed at them after they do a pit maneuver. Trying to blend into traffic right there. Definitely has no front passenger tire. That was what we were, I saw earlier on. Uh, but right now you can see that he's made his way onto Sepulveda Boulevard. And it looks like we're going to be heading northbound on Sepulveda. And uh, I'm going to have to work with the pilot here for just a moment to try to get uh, keep up with it. And uh, I just heard Dylan, he's, he's listening in and he's uh, keeping up with us, but he actually said that he's trying to get a hold of them right now to, to try to expedite our, uh, our, our, our ability to stay with it. But right now, though, you can see that vehicle, three tires now up on the sidewalk, I believe. No, not out on the sidewalk, not on the side, just on a, part, por a portion of con uh, pavement there. Yeah. yeah. So at any rate, ooh. All right, everybody, we have been listening there to Fox 11, Stu Mundell high up above right now as they continue to follow this police chase here on this Friday. And we can tell, uh, just like us too, was uh, showing that uh, one tire looks, it looks to be just riding on the rim almost. And uh, you can see here, suspect wanted for murder here. And obviously police will not be letting uh, uh, this uh, police pursuit to go. So uh, they are going to continue to follow this suspect. The the only problem is uh, you just don't know what is going to happen next as that uh, suspect now barely trying to make that turn right there and is able to zoom past. We are following it for you right here on Live Now from Fox. All right, in just moments, everyone, we will go out to our team, Fox 11 in Los Angeles. Uh, they are continuing, of course, to break in on this uh, big story that just coming down of this live chase that we are all watching right here on Live Now from Fox. So we are going to bring it to you. This is the coverage of Fox 11 in Los Angeles. And we're going to keep up with it. He's underneath it uh, on Imperial right there, very close to the 105. But if he makes a turn to the south, that would be the best. If he makes a turn to the north, it's going to make it difficult for us to keep up with it. But again, dangerous pursuit out here. LAPD, they've got their, they've got their, their things they got to deal with right now as well. Like how are they going to bring this to an end? They're not going to let this one go. They're not going to go into a tracking mode with something like this. And definitely with the, with the possibility of an armed and dangerous suspect in that back seat. You can see the LAPD helicopter right above it. But right now, this pursuit continues at near the LAX area as this, uh, this truck keeps those officers at bay. Three tires, so you know he's going to have some braking problems. And right now, back underneath the 105. Yeah, this is, this is kind of a tricky pursuit, at least from our end right now, because we are looking at a lot of overpasses, tall buildings as well. That's kind of tough for you guys to, to navigate and to get a clear picture of. But yeah, we are hearing confirmed murder suspect in this, in this SUV, this truck, three occupants in the vehicle. Uh, as you're watching this police pursuit unfold right now, we're trying to get a clearer shot of, of exactly where he is. Yeah, he, he's continuing on Imperial Highway. Yeah. The, the 105 keeps blocking him right there, but he's continuing on Imperial. We'll probably get a, just a glimpse of him right there through that underpass, unless he turns or something happens right there. We're going to get ahead of him. There he is making his way past us right now, but continuing on. So we're going to be leaving the LAX area. This is a plus for us, and it's going to be getting us into the Inglewood area. But you can see right there, not a lot of traffic on Imperial. That's a big plus, and then you got the, uh, uh, some cars. you got a red light right there. Just went right through that solid red, but this continues on very 
very dangerous situation indeed. But uh, LAPD, they're going to bring this to an end, hopefully without any kind of uh, injuries or any problems. Right now, though, continuing on, we're making our way out of the LAX area and into the Hawthorne area. And uh, this vehicle continues to try to maneuver around stuff. I just wonder how long that rim is going to hold up. Uh, you know, if, if that rim starts getting too, getting too worn down, it's going to start dragging and it's going to make that truck even more impossible to maneuver. And uh, it looks like we're going to be going northbound now in the Hawthorne area and we're going to be on Inglewood Boulevard. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if that's possibly the reason he's taken it slower is because he knows that his front tire is, has essentially come off. I wonder how long he can drive like that. You know, we've seen these go for quite a long time, and we've seen a lot of these suspects just keep pushing those vehicles because they, you know, what what difference does it make about the car? They're not concerned about what's going on there. They're trying to get away from law enforcement, so they're going to do whatever they can. Right now, using that center lane, northbound is where he's headed. It's going to be difficult for Skyfox to keep up. I'm sure Dylan is going to try to help make a plan here to see. In, unless he turns around, if he continues northbound, we're going to have to cross over LAX again, and that's going to be a little difficult for us but right now continuing northbound on Inglewood Boulevard making his way away from the 105 and LAPD you can see that officer right there you know he just wants to get up there and do that pit maneuver but at this point it's not approved because there's an armed and dangerous suspect inside that vehicle. Yes yeah, so they have to really kind of keep their distance in cases like this right because it's, it's unconfirmed that he's armed is that right? Well you know, they, they have they have reports of, and that's good enough. I mean, you don't want to be able to, you don't want to get into a situation where, you know, you're, you're thinking this. I'm sure they believe that every suspect could ha have the possibility of being armed when they approach him. But when they actually have reports of, they're going to take that even more serious. Making his way up to another uh, major intersection up there, that's going to be Century Boulevard. That was one of his takes earlier on, but it looks like he's continuing northbound as he's making his way northbound on Century. LAPD still right there hot on his trail, doing what they can just to keep the public safe. Lights and sirens, let people know what's going on. You can see people pulling over to the side of the road. That's what they need to do. But right now, that's an armed and dangerous suspect in a heavy vehicle that has problems. As that front wheel is out, they don't want this vehicle screening into somebody innocent, taking another life. They've had those issues in the past. Well, certainly it's, it's kind of fortuitous that there are not many cars on the road. What, what's the consideration behind maybe putting down uh, spike strips? Uh, you know what? I'm sorry about that. We were just—I was just talking to Dylan. I had my 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 mic muted. We're making plans to get up. We have to climb up to about 2,500 feet mm -hmm. or more, and then we have to climb, go across uh, the LAX. But now it does appear that he's making that turn and he's heading back towards the 405. So now he's on 93rd Street, but still very slow speeds out there. Uh, LAPD, they would have had many opportunities to do that pit to bring this thing to an end. But again, because of the arm, the situation inside that vehicle, they're not going to want to do that. This truck continues to push those that one rim. And, and, you know, the more that thing wears down, the more that's going to create drag on that truck. Hopefully the truck gives up before those suspects do. And then, you know, maybe they'll just kind of get out of that vehicle towards the end. We've seen a lot of foot chases where they get out and run. But if one of those suspects is armed, it's going to be a very dangerous situation. Indeed, LAPD, they know about this. They have other other officers in the area. And, of course, they're um, getting a hold of Inglewood PD. I'm sure they know what's going on as well. Going across, getting into oncoming traffic once again. A lot of traffic down there. You can see people ma waiting for that light. Making that turn, looks like we're going to be heading northbound again on La Cienega. That seems to be one of the roads that he favors as he's been on that a number of times this afternoon. Yeah, at some point you would have to imagine that that this the, the front tire would give out uh, and that this would come to an end. He is taking it awfully slow. It's what, speeds of between 40 and 50 miles 40. an hour right now? 40 miles an hour? Yeah, 40 to 50. Yeah, 40 to 50 miles an hour. That's pretty accurate, by the way. Even though we're quite a distance away, I wish I could just get get, get out get out of the uh, out of the doubler and just show you how far away it is. I'm sure Dylan can't even see it with his naked eye. But that vehicle continuing a little bit of a swerve right there. You know, Marla, I'm really kind of curious about that front wheel as well. You know, that thing's just going to kind of grind and grind and grind. Eventually, it's going to start running on on the chassis, and when that starts happening, that truck is really going to start slowing down but again just continuing on a lot of folks on the road today now he's got to do that against traffic thing again it, it is just dangerous for anybody that's out there right now even though that vehicle moving relatively slow 
you know, you just don't want to see him careen into uh, into a pedestrian or anything like that. Now we're going to be going eastbound on Olive Street, so back over the 405. You notice he's not getting on any freeway. No, so he's not. Kind of yeah. Wonder. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's looking for a spot where they know or or they have an idea or somebody's in the area that they can jump out and run to. But right now I got to work with Dylan once again. We got to get across. Uh, we got to get across LAX. And uh, he just he's hearing me. He's actually telling me they're waiting. For, we're waiting for permission to cross. So it's going to be a few moments or two. But he's making a U-turn again as I'm hearing it. There he is. Yep, that's making correct. It. And he's making a U-turn. So he's making. He's heading back the same way. So he's westbound once again. We're going to lose him behind that hotel. But you just got to wonder. Like he's it's, going around know, in circles. Right. And, and it, right? it seems like, you know, yeah, it, it almost it, he's staying in this area. And I don't think that, you know, a lot of times we'll hear like, oh, you know, they're th oh, here we go. Here we go. And no, he's come to a stop. Change his mind. Oh, nope. No, he's not. No, nope. no, nope. no, he's not. No, nope. <laughs> change his mind. Yeah. So and uh, again, again, against traffic right there as he just continues to elude these officers. But uh, LAPD, they, you know, they they have the opportunity, many an opportunity to do that pit maneuver on this one, but it's just because of that dangerous situation inside that vehicle that they're not going to be doing that. And now I have to let Dylan know if he, I'm sure he's keeping up, but yeah, he's staying, he's staying on the other side of the airport. So as soon as we can cross, we should be able to cross and get over and get a little closer. Yeah, it's almost like they're kind of, they're they're trying to do this dance in a, in a way. They don't want to put the, he's not going fast enough really to put the public in danger. Uh, but they, and they do have to keep their distance because just in case this guy is armed and dangerous, you just never know. You know, that, that is the big question. And a lot of my, you know, we talk about pursuits all the time and you know, people say that it's like, well, why don't they, and why don't they? And, you know, one of the things is, is like, we're not in that position. We're not that officer that's behind the wheel of that cruiser that's right behind him. And of course, you know, they want to do what they can to get these things taken care of and, 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 uh, as quickly as possible. They want to catch the bad guys, trust me. But again, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're in harm's way. You're directly in harm's way. And so those are that's usually what's going on. And of course, the number one thing for any of a law enforcement officer is to protect the public. So again, they have to they have to weigh these options and they have to take care of what's going on. They have to take care of themselves. But right now though, the suspect or suspects possibly inside this vehicle continuing on. They're going westbound. I feel that I feel Sky Fox moving. I'm looking out the window. I'm gonna be a lot happier when we're back over it. But we're south of LAX. This is happening north of LAX. We're meant to be over there and we're gonna be a lot closer in just a few moments. Oh, okay, so they're they're going and essentially you're going to be able to keep track of this. They're not crossing over LAX airspace, is what you're saying. Yeah, we are yeah. literally directly over LAX right now, and uh, you can see him slowing down. And it looks like he's trying to make another turn. You know, look at that front wheel. Look at just you, it's get, you really down. get an idea that that whole front suspension is gone. So this thing is just dragging along right there. That front wheel not even turning, making his way into a neighborhood out here. Let's get a little bit of wider shot. Um, you know, and it's just continuing on. Let me get you the information that you guys want right there on the road. But, you know, he's in a neighborhood. So you got to wonder if, if he's here for a reason. Is he going to jump out? Is he near some place where there's, he's got uh, friendly people in the area that might be able to help him hide or, you know, talk him into just giving himself up? That truck definitely, definitely just coming apart. Oh, it's apart coming right apart there. as we speak, Sue. Yeah. Look at this. It's coming yeah. apart. This thing is going to be over, you know, hopefully peacefully, but it, it, this car can't run for much longer like this. Yeah. And in this time now, you know, you were saying somebody in the back seat. I definitely see somebody in the passenger seat right there. And, you know, just making his way through this neighborhood, still those really slow speeds out here. But again, the fact that this is an armed and dangerous suspect in there, possible attempted murder, they are going to take this very, very carefully. Even if this thing comes to a, comes to an end, like that truck just stops running, it's going to be. A, it might turn out to be a standoff. But right now, just look at that damage. That oh yeah, it is, it's it's amazing that that truck is still just kind of pushing along right there, and uh, you can see one person in the passenger seat. Of course, we have the driver, of course, but you were saying that somebody might be in the back seat, and with that heavy tint, I really just can't see it right now. Yeah, we're, we're trying to figure that out. Oh, I'm seeing some, a little bit of sparks right now coming from that yeah. tire. It's really, Stu, it's got to be only a matter of time before this car gives out. 
I mean, it's, it's already it's happening. So they really can't go definitely. any faster than this. You know, that might be part of it, too. Maybe he is really pushing it, and this is all that all that, that truck is going to give right now. It's probably dragging on the frame. That wheel not even turning, kind of just flopped over to the side. So, it, it you know, you got to wonder what it sounds like inside that truck, too. That must just be just an unbelievably loud in there. And then, of course, there's no almost no control. You see this thing making these turns every now and then, but the straightaways is probably what this person wants because that's what at least it seems to have some control about. But we're continuing on out here. We're still very, very close to the airport. This pursuit continuing, LAPD right behind it. They have a helicopter in the air as best they can, much like Sky Fox, and uh, continuing on right now. And I think Dylan was trying to get a hold of me. Just one second, what's up? Yeah, I mean, it looks like he is uh, moving away from the residential area and hopefully that will, you know, if, once this thing does come to an end, you're hoping that there's not going to be some sort of standoff. Uh, but but again, if it does happen, then thankfully they're not no longer in that heavily residential neighborhood, which is what we saw just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, well, right now we're back on Century Boulevard, and you, I'm sure anybody that drives to the airport realizes exactly where we are. He's heading back towards the airport right now. And, you know, this is the thing. A lot of we've heard this in the past, like, you know, Again, when you talk with your friends and they're like, oh, why don't they just drive to the airport then? Well, you know what? If he drives to the airport, there are plenty of cameras out there. A truck with three tires making all that noise grinding along. It's not. It's going to get noticed. So if he's thinking about getting into the airport to try to escape, that is probably not going to happen. And also, you have to think. The airport police definitely notified about this, and they have the ability to lock down or stop the the in. in the the incoming traffic there he goes he did not go in he's back onto i believe onto uh, sepulveda boulevard right there and just continuing on but uh is, this is going to be one of those things I, no he is he's actually he's actually trying to get into the airport he's trying right to get now. into so the airport this is going to Yes, definitely driving into the airport right now. Yeah. So this is one of those ones where you just got to kind of wonder, if he gets out and runs into one of those terminals, uh, you know, airport police definitely knows about this. But uh, but he's, he, I'm hearing them talk about it right now. They're, they're talking about the he's, he's on the arrival side. I'm going to try to get this the best we can. I'm sure Dylan is going to try to get us back over the complexes. If this thing continues, we can keep an eye on it. But right now, though, uh, the last we saw him making his way into the airport on the arrivals level. What does this mean for people who are trying to get to the airport right now? Do they have certain uh, certain nope, areas nope. blocked off? Well, the, he, well, right now he's made his made a U-turn and uh, made his way back on the back on the streets out here. We're working our way back out of the airport. Thank goodness for that. But uh, yeah, I could just imagine what that would have been like, and people trying to catch their flights. It would have been it would have been very chaotic for sure. But uh, the truck slowing down right now. Looks like we're coming back up onto Sepulveda Boulevard, slowing down, slowing down, and then making his way through there. And what's he going to do? Looks like he's continuing on the uh, wrong side of the road, and he's staying on uh, Century, making his way back basically the same direction he just came from. Yes, yeah, so he's going He's going down the wrong side of the road right now. At some point, you know, you would have to think, and, and again, we don't make judgments like this, you know, from where we're sitting, but at some point, you know, you would have to believe that he's going slow enough to where officers would be able to catch up with him and at least make some kind of move. You know, to stop yes, him. Uh, you know, but look at that. Look, look at just look at the pitch on that truck right now. It is just completely nose down. It's dragging through the free uh, dragging through the asphalt right there. Wrong side of the road. You got you got folks that are just kind of just there you go. He just got he just corrected it. Uh, you just got to kind of wonder, you know, a lot of these folks just come into Los Angeles, maybe tourists and they're making their way back over to the airport and they see <laughs> this kind Los of uh, Angeles, crazy right? going on. Welcome to LA, right? <laughs> Welcome to Los Angeles. But uh, we're continuing to see it. He's making his way past all those high rises and uh, and, and hotels uh, we're going to see if we can see if he pops out right there but that truck is just I, i'm just amazed it is it just keeps on going and look at that pitch look at those rear yeah. wheels this thing is just I mean, totally this is, this is a commercial down for right avalanche now. right now i mean how, how well this car is held up <laughs> in the yeah. face of one it's wheel a, uh you know essentially being ground down completely and he's yeah. been going like this yeah. for, for quite a while right 
he's been going wheels. like this for a minute, and you, you just got to kind of wonder how much longer that truck is going to put up with that. Uh, they've got a lot of traffic right there. The last we saw him was right there behind that Hilton. We're going to keep an eye on it. I got an ear on the scanner as well. There they are making their way through the traffic. And it uh, looks like uh, we are on the correct side of the road, but that truck's still just kind of pushing along down there as we're making our way on Century Boulevard. We're eastbound, so we're heading back out towards the 405 right now. You can see all that traffic. He's got nothing he can do. He's got nothing he can do right, right he has there. nowhere to go. Looks like, oh, oh, oh no. Did, was he that just a hit... Ferrari? Did he just oh, hit that Ferrari? Oh, he just crashed into a Ferrari. Look at that. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, that's painful. Oh, and that guy's not happy either. Oh, I can see the dollar signs right now, Stu. Yeah. Well, you know what? That oh, might that guy's have been not happy. Just as, just as good as a Ferrari. That was a, it was an Audi A, uh, A8. But anyways, um, yeah, it looks like the truck, it looks like for some reason the truck is slowing down now. He, oh, Doors are open. Getting out. He's there there they go. One, two, it. three. Oh, he's trying In to call car? somebody. No, 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 oh, no, 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 is no. This, is it? Oh, no. Wait, so whose car is this? I don't know. I, you know what? I think, I think this is a friend. This I mean, has clearly to be a it friend. is because it, look this, at, they're ripping through traffic right now. They are ripping through traffic. Like the driver of that vehicle jumped in the backseat of that thing. Uh, you know, looks like a, 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 some sort of a Mercury. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Dylan, we got to stay with this. Okay. Uh, he's eastbound on Century, but now I, I can't. I gotta. We gotta find out if he gets on the freeway. What happened to the other passengers in that car? Uh, you Was know what? Right now, I'm in? gonna try to stay with this car. Hang on. All right. So if you're just joining us, LAPD is in the pursuit of a murder suspect. This has been happening in essentially LAX area, Inglewood yeah. area. They were at first were chasing this four door uh, avalanche uh, for quite a while. The the front tire came off. That car hit another car, came to a stop. And then we see the driver hop out and then go into this car. And now it's speeding down. Which area is this? Century Still? Boulevard, Century, Century Boulevard, Boulevard. And this thing is moving along at a good clip. You, you know, this is somebody that was waiting for that person. So, you know, this is one of those ones where this is not just a pursuit. This is not just uh, somebody, you know, that, you know, just a, a, one of those regular deals. That driver of that car is now aiding and abetting. This is a big deal. Uh, you know, LAPD right behind them right now. Again, they're probably going to be in that same situation where they can't do that pit maneuver. The driver of this vehicle driving very dangerously, extremely high speeds at some point. Right now, though, I don't know if those numbers are correct because we're actually on our digital uh, extender right now, so those numbers for the speedometer might be off. Making a turn there, staying in this residential neighborhood, though we know it, we saw it, the driver of that uh, avalanche jumps out, gets into the back seat of this car, and then, and so this person definitely was waiting for them. This is not just a random person. This isn't a carjacking. This is somebody that was waiting for them and now took that, they took that suspect. And again, in, in pursuit, you can see it. We're going to be on Maple Street, LAPD right behind them right yep. there. And those other two folks, I'm not, what, what is going on here? What is going they on there? Trying. You saw that they other officer just. Yeah, just just kind of just swap position. So maybe yeah. they are going to try to do a pit. Be aggressive. Try to take this. Oof. Going right through intersections. <sighs> yes, this is. Uh, you know, we went from extremely slow, almost where where I was less worried about the public. Right now, I'm extremely worried. These are high speeds, crazy maneuvers right there, getting very close to a lot of vehicles. And the speeds, just the, the crazy driving, the reckless driving, just continues. LAPD staying behind it right there. You got one unit just right on his tail. But right now, though, this pursuit continues. The driver of that truck, probably the suspect that they were looking for, seeing how that he jumped out like that and got into the backseat of this car. Right now, though, continues on. We're in a residential neighborhood. We're going to be in the Inglewood area. LAPD in pursuit. High speeds, extremely dangerous. And it continues on out here, making their way. And looks like we're going northbound. I got to work with Dylan, see if we can get at least a little bit closer because he's definitely outside the LAX area and it doesn't look like we're heading back that way anytime soon.
Yeah, I mean, now we kind of know, we, we, we might have a better picture as to why that original car was circling around the neighborhood. Maybe they were trying to contact whoever this person is to try to get into this escape vehicle. Oh, you know, that, that might have been it. Maybe they were just biding their time trying to get into a situation where that the driver of this vehicle was close enough to meet with that person in that avalanche and then have that opportunity to jump into that car. Um, just give me one second. I got to talk with, uh, with, with Dylan here, and we got to make a plan so we can stay with it. Absolutely. In the meantime, let's look at the, the actual moment that this suspect, this driver, bailed out of his car. Look at this as cops were waiting for him and hops into a waiting SUV. We don't know the relationship that this person has with, with the, this vehicle, this getaway vehicle. Uh, we do know that the avalanche at that point was, was nearly broken down because it was only driving on three wheels at that point. Uh, going through the Inglewood neighborhood, uh, trying at one point to enter LAX and then turning around the leading officers on this lengthy chase were, were told that this person is an attempted murder suspect who could possibly be armed and dangerous. So now officers are in this difficult position where they have to figure out how much of a distance to stay away from him while also making sure that this, this driver right here uh, doesn't climb up too, too fast in the speed to endanger the public. So they, they have a really tough decision they have to make right now. as we're watching this unfold right now, and Sue's trying to get some more information for us. But yeah, what you're watching right now, LAPD in pursuit of a murder suspect in the Inglewood area. He keeps on, yeah, I mean, this is the speeds right now. I would probably have to say he's going about 50, 60 miles an hour down these streets. No effort to stop. He's being pursued by one, two, three, four, five, at least five squad cars, six. Am I counting? The and now he's going through, right yeah. There. He's going through okay. some more residential neighborhoods. He's approaching 4th Avenue right now. You can see right there that the, we have the street maps up. I don't have to give you location. But this continuing on, and he seems to be in a residential neighborhood. And he's been making blocks out here. We're trying to move Sky Fox a little bit closer just so we can get a little bit better pictures. We are really far away from this. Now, I understand uh, one, of our, one of our good friends at the, uh, at the station just gave us the information. They did get those two other people in custody. I oh, believe they did. there were two good. females that were in that car. They got them into custody. But right now, that driver, that that's the one that's still inside this car, and the, he is not driving that vehicle. That is what is uh, what is so bizarre about this. He made a phone call. He got that. He got somebody there to meet them, and then have that. You know, have them basically meet them in that area, and then and, and then you know jumped into the back seat of that car. LAPD. They are really, really doing what they can to stay with this car. You can see the uh, SUVs. You know, even the LAPD ones hitting those bumps out there, getting a little bit of air. Uh, continuing on, we're going to be on back on Manchester, I believe. But this uh, pursuit continues. And again, we're sorry about the distance. We are. It's just been in one of those spots where we making doing what we can to stay with it. Right now, though, this older SUV continues to keep those officers at bay. I would almost venture to say, I'm not sure. Is that a link? like an old uh, some sort of Lincoln product but right now you can see it continuing on picking up those high speeds in these smaller neighborhoods whenever that happens I always worry not just about pets but also definitely about people people are out on the roadways sure. you're not expecting somebody to do 60 miles an hour in front of your home uh, unless yeah, not you to live mention, on a, it's you know, also a spring major break, street right you have kids at home too yep who are outside playing yeah, a lot of kids are at home right now Making his way, at least you see him slowing down a little bit as he's making his way out, uh, onto, a, onto what looks like to be a major street out there. But continuing on now, and then you can see it just gets onto, the, gets onto those straightaways, just hammers it, trying to keep that distance between those officers. You know, the deal is, is hopefully this does not end poorly. These high speeds, that kind of driving, of course, you know, he, he's looking, probably looking behind him, wondering about where those officers are. But right now we're still in the, uh, well, actually we're in the South Los Angeles, so we're out of Inglewood. I'm looking at the streets myself. We're in St. Andrews and 85th Street. So we're back in the L.A. area right now. But this vehicle continues to elude officers, LAPD, in pursuit. The person that's in the back seat of this car, now we know it's the back seat, is the person that was in that avalanche, driving that avalanche. So I'm starting to wonder if that was the person that uh, of interest that they had 
uh, all along had their eyes on because they are making every effort to get this guy into custody right now. LAPD on the, on the ground in force. And I'm also hearing them talking about other officers in the area. So when this does come to an end, you, you will see a lot of officers just mysteriously appear because they know what's going on, they're staying in the area, and of course they want to do what they can to get this suspect into custody. And then of course they've got a lot of questions for that driver, and I'm sure there's some charges going to be pressed against him as well. Yeah, un unlike the unlike the avalanche where that car was essentially breaking down, this one seems to be doing just fine. So Stu, what, what's the idea of possibly doing some spike strips for officers? You know, spike strips would be something that they could use, but you just don't know where he's going to be. And, uh, you know, and that's the thing also, not every LAPD unit has spike strips in the trunk. So they have to get somebody that has them, then they have to get, figure out where he's going. There's a lot of logistics involved in something like that. Not saying it can't be done, but just to have it done, that's going to be that's going to be a bit of a trick. Right now, though, we're making, his, we're making their way, coming up on Vermont, as I understand it. So we're actually back over by... And hopefully, oh, he went through Vermont. So we're going to be getting closer and closer to the 110 freeway. Uh, hang on just one second. Dylan, can we make our, just, can we just go over to the 110? Uh, he's, he's clearly talking with, uh, with LAX right now. But it, it, we're, we're making our way back uh, out towards the 110 right now. So hopefully if he gets onto the 110, we'll be able to get a little bit closer. We can clean these shots up. I'm just really, my big worry right now is my job, meaning that I need to, we need to see how this thing ends and where these suspects go. So right now, that seems that is my big concern. But right now, a lot of folks on the ground, they are, they yeah. are they're, they're, they're certainly not, not making your job as it easier. Would be. Yeah, but uh, but definitely these high speeds, that kind of reckless driving, getting our way into the South Los Angeles area. Take a look at yeah, that really right there. That's over a there lot of traffic. Oh, and a bicyclist. So uh, now he's through I mean, Figueroa. Again, he's not so going you that fast know he's right getting now. up right by the 110 freeway and squeeze, squeezing through, squeezing through, and it looks like those those were the on uh, on ramps right there. So, and what's going to happen here? Well, you know what? He can't do the rope-a-dope because LAPD is right behind him. So he's, he's going to pop out. He popped out the other side. Let's see if he gets onto the freeway. Yeah, what's the closest freeway? How Oops. easy of access is it for him right now? There he is. Get... There he is. There he is. Yeah. And they're saying it, too, on the radio right now. Lots of traffic. You see him driving. Looks like he's driving over the center divider. Now he's on the wrong way, making his way over to Broadway. But uh, this pursuit continues out here. And hang on, hang on, hang on. That's him right there. That's him right there. It looks like. Going into a parking lot? What is he lot? doing? Get out of the parking lot. Get out of the parking lot. Oh, jeez. Uh, Wait, where, right, is, where is he yeah, trying going to go? Yeah, right through the Bank of America right there. A lot of pedestrians out that way. I'm just wondering what the strategy could Keeping be Keeping an eye on it. He's behind the building right now. You can see these officers are pretty clever. You can see some of them waiting in the waiting in the wings down there just in case he comes back the other way. But right now it's getting more and more difficult for us to shoot it. I got to work with Dylan just a little bit. Can we get can we go a little bit south? <sighs> yeah, I know. Can we park over the 1 110? Okay. All right, so while we while we wait, Sue, for you to maybe get a cleaner, actually, is can we see him now, right now? He's continuing. It looks like okay, uh, making his way back onto 85th Street, and it looks like we're continuing eastbound on 85th Street through the South Los Angeles area. Extremely high speeds, very dangerous situation for anybody on the ground down there, and this pursuit continues. LAPD in pursuit. They've got two helicopters over it right now, uh, LAPD helicopters and a number of officers right behind it. And then not to mention, they probably have more officers in the area just waiting to do whatever they need to do to bring this to an end. What's the closest highway around here? The, because I'm, I'm just wondering what the strategy is because he pulled into a parking lot and now it seems like he's going around in circles again. So I, I don't know if they're looking for something or if they're trying to make uh, make a getaway or find a straight way. I don't I don't know. I mean, he's being pursued yeah. by one, two, three, four uh, police SUVs. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of wonder what, you know, you never can figure out what these guys are thinking or gals, you know, and, and just the idea is what, you know, basically what's going on is they're just trying to stay away from law enforcement. They, they always think, like, I'm going to be the one that gets away. And they, 
we rarely see them actually get away, especially with a situation like this. Uh, right now, LA, uh, LAX is keeping us at a distance. They're making their way southbound. I'm going to work with Dylan, my pilot, again, see maybe we can get over the 110, head south, because he's be coming up on the 105 here shortly. But uh, I... All right, and while, yeah, while, I, no. Sue, while you try to get a clearer picture of what's happening right now, let's get you back to that moment where the driver of this avalanche hops out. We're told this is an attempted murder suspect, and he hops in the back seat of this waiting SUV to get away from authorities. And I have to hand it to the LAPD. They were hot on his heels almost immediately, uh, but he was ripping through traffic at that point, uh, just trying to make a, a, a getaway. Uh, this is after a lengthy pursuit in that avalanche which led to one of the front wheels coming off altogether the car essentially broke down to the point where it was undrivable and i believe he also hit another car uh, right before that that avalanche came to a stop we don't really know who the what the suspect who the suspect is uh how many we were told that the two people who were in that avalanche tried to get away but they were actually arrested by police so they're in police custody right now uh, but this, this suspect right now still driving in that SUV trying to escape authorities. Sue, are you hearing anything about how many people are in this SUV? Well, we're hearing right now that it is going to be a, uh, it's, it's a female driver that we're hearing that right now. We hear they're 92nd in Avalon. I'm trying to, uh, and now they're over by Manchester. So I'm trying to... Hang on. Yeah, I know. Um, I, you know what, guys yeah. and gals, I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find this again. It is like a needle in a haystack. We've got all these new rules going on where we're not allowed to be near the LAPD helicopters. Westbound Manchester from Avalon, so he's got to be coming up somewhere right in here. So we're going to keep an eye on it. We'll see if we can pick this thing up here in just a second. But uh, he's going to be coming up on Main. Yeah. San Pedro. So he's got to be like right here somewhere, right in this area. There's Manchester. Yeah, I know. It's 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 not easy right now because you're dealing with a, a mixed industrial residential area. Cars. And oh, I see one cop car. Let me see. You guys, you guys aren't far away. Yeah. From getting the shot here. <laughs> it I is know, driving me crazy personally too. I'm sure me. it is. I, I'm sure it is too. Yeah. There he is. There okay. he is right there. Yeah, there he back. is. So he's, he's, he's on, it, it says 84th Street in Maine, but I, I have a feeling that we're uh, on Manchester. But it's continuing on there. It, we're, we're at such a, an angle that it makes it very difficult to see anything. LAPD, or the, I'm sorry, LAX, not allowing us to move. And uh, that's something that uh, we should be talking to them about maybe later on. But at any rate, uh, making his way over here to Broadway. We'll see when he pops out on Broadway. There he goes. Okay, so he's heading down Broadway oh, right now. Wait, 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 wait. Eastbound Manchester. So he turned around and he's going back the other direction. So... Making Maine a U-turn? Is that what happened? She made a, we yeah, should say a she because you're, a, you're being told that this is a female driver now. There he goes. Yep. There you go. So he's southbound on on uh, on Maine right now. There you go. You can see the top of the roof as he's making far, making his way farther and farther away from us. Uh, but yes, uh, that's, I heard that it was a female driver. That's what I heard just uh, momentarily ago on the. I heard it on the radio, so I can't really say for sure. But uh, right now he's making his way southbound Maine. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sure Dylan, we're going to move south as soon as we can, right? Okay. Yeah, so we're not we're not exactly sure what the relationship was. But if we stay over the 110, to, how is that a problem? To this this other SUV that's uh, that's being pursued right now, but we see the moment where this SUV actually went into a Bank of America parking lot. If we can pull up that video, you can see right there. Yeah, makes its way into the parking lot, uh, followed by officers. I mean, you can see people walking into the bank at that point. Uh, and then uh, apparently trying to cut through the parking lot onto a nearby street. But this, this has been a wild pursuit so far, uh, starting in Inglewood, sort of circling around the LAX neighborhood. And we kind of wondered why that was the case. But then uh, when the avalanche started coming apart and, and the, the front wheel essentially came off 
uh, and the avalanche actually hit a, a bystanding car. Uh, you see the driver hop out of the avalanche and into a waiting SUV. And there was that moment once again. You can see it broke down completely. Driver hops out, runs across the street, and then hops into a waiting car. So perhaps that's the reason uh, these this car was going so slow and was trying to figure out and was going essentially in circles trying to figure out where to go next. Uh, and this has been the, the case ever since. We're trying to get a clearer picture, but it looks like, yes, yeah, do you have it? number of LAPD yeah, there are, this person. There are, there's got to be, I, I, you know what, I want, should have counted them. It looked like something out of a movie. It seems like almost every officer in, in the division is in pursuit of that vehicle right there. Uh, we're getting a little, we're getting a, allowed to get a little bit closer now. So that's that's a huge plus. And I look at, I've been just passing cop car after cop car after cop car. I have yet to see the actual suspect vehicle. I think it is right there. Now we're making our way back into another major, going right through another major. Thank goodness that was a green light. And it's continuing on now. I believe we are on Avalon right now. And it's, it, and I'm sorry, 99th Street. 99th Street, we're heading eastbound. So we're making our way out of the LAX area. Thank goodness for that. And uh, and you can see that that vehicle continues to drive. We might be able to get a little bit of a better shot when we get close enough and see if it is actually a female driver. We understand that it may be. I heard that it was a female driver. And uh, this person, it, w this wasn't a carjacking. Uh, you know, it really, it doesn't seem like a carjacking at all. We, mm, you know, no. who knows what's going to come out later on. But this per the, the suspect from that Avalon jumped into the back seat of this vehicle right here and they took off like nobody's business they just like and we saw speeds approaching 100 miles an hour at some points on on a lot of the major streets out there now we're heading southbound century boulevard you got somebody somebody out in the roadway don't <laughs> try to yeah interfere yeah. with what's going on right and now you got a solid red solid red solid red solid and red, there's a big bus red. crossing through he's making a right okay. th no, no, whoa whoa did, I, I, couldn't, lost, I couldn't of, see there for a second, yeah, Stu. He, is. he slid a little bit, kind of lost control trying to get around that bus. You know, th that, that older SUV, you know, given it, given it its props, it is an older vehicle, but it's, you know, at least it's, it's, it's going, right? But uh, LAPD, they are in pursuit. That vehicle seems to be at least slowing down a little bit. We're not seeing those un un very, very high speeds that we saw earlier on. Maybe it's fatigue. That's something else that we never talk about. That driver, you know, you've got a lot of adrenaline. You've got a lot of push in there when you're driving like that. You're trying to stay alert and do all that. And then your body, you know, once that adrenaline goes, you really start to feel that slowing. That might be what we're seeing right here. Hopefully that moment of, of, of you know, soberness as it might be the driver might be like what am i doing we need right. to, we need to stop this before somebody gets hurt but uh it's continuing southbound and we're making our way it's still on century 109th street we're going to be getting really really close to the uh, 105 freeway here in a moment or two and uh hopefully he's going to make his way south on that or keep, keep going and we're going to be able to uh to get a you know fly this like a regular pursuit where we can get at least a little bit closer right now though it's continuing on and we can see it, but uh, y you know, you just worry about all those pedestrians out there. You worry about people that are just about going about their business. Well, and yeah. You've got somebody being chased by uh, by LAPD, and for what? That you know, that person, yes, it is a serious crime. But why would you want? You know, it is a lot of questions. And uh, you know, we're not here. This is not the moral hour for sure. Uh, okay, so he's making his way. It looks like he's heading eastbound. So he's going to be actually getting closer to us right now. And you can see. Moving along right there, we're in the in the city of Watts in the Los Angeles area, and the speeds definitely slowing down, but still a little bit of that reckless driving. And LAPD, a number of them right behind them, and we also know a number of them on the streets nearby, making another turn right there. We got somebody on a bicycle and we're going underneath the 105 freeway. So we're making our way southbound, and hopefully we're going to be able to get a little bit closer now, and we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, this pursuit continues as we're making our way out of the uh, LAPD area into the sheriff's area as we're uh, in entering the Compton area right now as 118th, 118th Street. That can't be. No, we're on, we're on success. We're on, on success moving southbound into Compton. Yeah, and I'm sure people who live in these apartment buildings and uh, and homes nearby are wondering what the heck is going on. But, you know, don't go, don't if you're watching this, don't go outside. Uh, we don't know if this person is armed. 
We know that we're hearing reports that this this person who fled into this SUV from the avalanche no, is an attempted murder there. suspect. So that's why that's why police are keeping their distance. They're keep well. They're not really keeping their distance. That's they. They just don't. They're just not able to do a pit maneuver. Right, they don't right. want to do that pit maneuver. Yeah, why didn't he pop out? What happened? Where did he go? Great, fantastic. I thought he was staying on 120th. Nope. It looks like he's going. He turned around, going back the other way. He got me on that one. He's running through another red light right there. It's on, and they're heading back over towards the 105 freeway. But you can see that vehicle definitely slowing down. That's, uh, if anything, that's going to be a plus for what's going on. Uh, you know, we're not we're not doing 60 to 80 miles an hour right mm -hmm. now. We're kind of just, you know, doing 40 to 50, which is still extremely dangerous, especially when you're running red lights. Making a, another turn right there. Looks like we're heading back out onto uh, Imperial Highway. And it uh, looks like we're heading westbound on Imperial, LAPD. Let's get, let's get a look at how many officers are actually right behind them right there. So, it, and it just continues. It, five, it just, I'm the, counting the five, line six. just continues. Six police SUVs behind them right now or, or more. Yep, yep. And you know, you know LAPD, they're, they're talking on the radios. They're going to be in that area. They want this thing to come to an end peacefully. But this car continues to just go and elude the officers from the LAPD. They could do the pit maneuver. We've seen a couple of opportunities where they could do it. Now, look at this. Look at this. Really busy. Really busy making those turns. You know, this is where the lights and sirens really come in handy. When you come up to an intersection like that, that means everybody's hearing those lights and sirens, so they're looking around, and if they're not moving off to the right, at least they're stopped. And that's going to be a big plus. It's probably going to save somebody's uh, injury and or damage to their vehicle. Right now, though, continuing on, you can see it right there, LAPD right behind them. We're on Imperial Highway. We're making our way back over to the 110 freeway. Hopefully this, uh, this, this person isn't trying to talk that driver into going back over to LAX because, again, we saw... Yes, it, it, it was complicated, it was difficult, but it definitely did not solve any of the problems. LAPD, just because they don't have a helicopter above it, doesn't mean those cars can't drive there. They can drive there. They can do whatever they need to do, and they're going to stay right behind it, and they're going to make sure that the sus suspects right now are in custody. That driver now is suspect at aiding and abetting, and, of course, you can see those speeds kind of just slowing down a little bit, but a lot of folks out today, a lot of folks watching Fox, I can tell you that, they're all out there on the side of the road just getting a gander what's going on. And of course, that's not what LAPD wants, and definitely do never try to get involved in any of this stuff or try to bring that thing to an end. Right now, though, this uh, SUV continues on. We're on Imperial Highway, making our way over to the 110 freeway. I mean, I, I suppose that's, you know, for better or worse, this grand show of law enforcement behind him right now uh, is deterring people from, from getting in his way. And, and you've been covering these things way longer than I have, obviously, Stu. So have you seen, is this common to see this many squad cars in pursuit of a suspect <laughs> no. like this? We're counting seven right now. No, no, not at all. And and you, it just kind of shows you how important this is for LAPD because they have that number of squad cars there. They may be, the, the thinking might be along the lines of somebody aided and abetted. Who else is going to aid and abet? What are they going to have to deal with when this comes to an end? So that's probably one of the reasons why they're allowing that. A lot of times it will only allow two or maybe three vehicles to actually be in pursuit, depending upon the number of persons inside that vehicle. But in this case, that is a, this is almost a parade of vehicles right there. Making a turn right now onto Broadway. It looks like we're going to be heading northbound on Broadway. Uh, we keep, this is, again, we're back in that LAX area, so it's going to be difficult to stay with it. But at least Broadway is a straightaway, so we can keep an eye on it, maybe get behind it and just look straight up the street. But uh, right now, the pursuit continues. You can see the uh, shadow for the LAPD helicopter that is above. I understand that there's another one that's nearby. Maybe they have, there's two of them over it. Dylan is confirming that right now. So they're keeping, they're, they're doing that also just to uh, make sure that when this comes to an end, that they have eyes on both those suspects when they get out and run. They want to get, make, they want to make sure both of them are going to be in custody when this comes to an end. Right now, though, 40, 50 miles an hour northbound on Broadway. We're making our way out of the Watts area. We're well established in the South LA area right now and just continuing northbound. Hopefully it gets all greens and there are none of these issues where we get up in, in, in the traffic again and he, this driver starts making 
those dangerous decisions. Yeah, you know, it is Friday, and I guess maybe that's a good thing when it comes to this kind of pursuit because I don't see many. It, it could be a lot more congested on the road than it is right now. Yeah, it could be. It could be, and it is Friday, and it is also Good Friday for that matter as well. A lot of folks staying home today in that observance, and then, of course, Easter is this weekend. Right now, though, it looks like we're making, we're setting up for what looks like a left turn. That doesn't mean that's what he's going to do. There we go. He's just getting around that traffic that stopped at the light, and there we go, making that turn again. This is where those lights and sirens come in handy. A lot of the folks down there, they hear those lights and sirens, and they do what they need to do. They stop. And, uh, or try to pull over to the side of the road. So this is continuing northbound right there. You can see it. Uh, we're still, I think portions of this is, and this is all LAPD's area right now. So right now continuing northbound, whoop. Yep, continuing northbound. I just heard the, the airship call it. So there you go. And uh, I'm gonna work with Dylan. Maybe we can get a little bit to the, to the right uh, just to get those trees out of the way. Okay, okay. So uh, we, this is where we this is where we're allowed to be right now. So we're going to keep an eye on it from where we can. But uh, this pursuit continuing out here. This driver catching a lot of these red lights. You see it right there. Another solid red. Uh, LAPD. The lights and sirens probably alerting a lot of these folks to what's going on. Northbound on Broadway. Two people in that vehicle. One of them from that avalanche. We understand possible murder, possible attempted murder suspect. And then the uh, driver of this vehicle now aiding and betting that person from that avalanche because clearly this vehicle is waiting for him when they stopped and they uh, jumped out and got into the back seat and this pursuit continued. It's northbound on, on, uh, on Broadway making a turn right now on 89th Street. Don't know if they know this area, don't know what the plan is, but right now this just continues as a pursuit. LAPD behind it, very little they can do to stop it. But uh, they are probably starting to work some plans, maybe changing up their ideas. They might try spike strips. They might try something else. Yeah, especially when you have that many officers in pursuit of the suspects. And he's going through residential neighborhoods right now once again. Uh, you know, and, and he's also going slow enough to where it doesn't seem like he's really endangering the public too much with the speed, at least. I mean, I know that he went through a couple of intersections uh, and, and didn't stop, but... You know, as far as the speed goes, it doesn't really seem like he's putting the public in that much danger. So I'm wondering how long this pursuit can continue under those circumstances without police, you know, doing something to intervene here, whether it's strike strips or, or a pit maneuver. You know, I, I think they might be trying to do the spike strips right now. Uh, we'll see what, we'll see how this plays out. Coming up onto another major, we don't see a lot of traffic out there. We have a bad angle right now. But we're coming up on San Pedro. Looks like he's going to be going northbound. Northbound on San Pedro. You got LAPD right behind it. That would have been another good spot to do that pit maneuver, making that slow turn as they're making that transition. And nobody, uh, no other civilians in the area. But again, they haven't been certified. That's certified. They're all certified. Well, the driver that would do the pit would be certified. Hey, take a look at this. A lot of traffic right there. Yeah, a lot what's of this traffic person going to do now? Manchester. And slowing down, at least we see that. And then making his way through that uh, through that uh, intersection right there, but uh, you know that's the thing. They might try to they might try to change this up a little bit. They might try to bring this to an end with a pit maneuver, but they also might use spike strips. You did mention it in the past, and believe me, they are trying to just trying to be proactive. Let's just leave it at that. If 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 this, if the opportunity arrives, they will try to use those spike strips for sure. In the meantime, you know, while we're trying to get a clear shot of the suspects, let's let's talk about the moment that he hopped into uh, this SUV that we're looking at right now. And then he almost, we're, we're told, almost hit a pedestrian, was just pulling into the, the Bank of America parking lot. Yeah. So this, yeah, that was those were scary. Those were scary moments indeed. Whenever, yeah. whenever I see a suspect drive into a parking lot like a, be at a grocery store, or in this case it was Bank of America, you've got pedestrians walking around, you know those folks are not thinking about fast cars driving in the, you know, driving through those parking lots. It, it, it just, I just, just my blood runs cold, it really does. You just don't want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, LAPD, definitely the public safety is number one. And also, got to be clear about this, even that suspect's safety is on their minds. Uh, continuing on, you, you can you can see that they keep keep moving. They're talking about something that they might have recovered from the other vehicle. Maybe somebody from our desk can clarify what they just said right there. Because 
if there's a possibility that they did recover a weapon in that other vehicle and there's a possibility that this person not armed, they might be able to do something like a pit maneuver. Uh, sure, you but really you don't, I mean, you well, don't know as far as this SUV goes, you don't know what, what kind of weapon or if there could true. be a weapon in this, in this car. It doesn't matter what happened in the avalanche. All they're pursuing right now is this SUV. True. Very true. You just, and these are the things that officers are trained to think about. These are the things that officers, that, you know, this is what keeps officers alive. They just think about it like that. And, uh, you know, so they are not going to do anything that's going to put themselves directly in harm's way, but they want to bring this to an end safely. They want to make sure that everybody is okay at the end. But right now, slow moving. We're passing a school right there, but you did mention it is definitely spring break right now. Uh, but that doesn't mean they might not have summer programs. But uh, mm -hmm. you can see it like we're farther and farther away. We're making it, we're, we're creeping up, we're staying with it the best we can. But where are this person's going? That's the big question. I don't even know right? if they know where they're going at this point. It, it kind of seems like this, this pursuit has been relatively aimless. There's, it, it hasn't Definitely. gone on the highway. It's been going through these you know, mixed residential neighborhoods for a while now. And that was the same, yep. the same thing with the avalanche before it came to a stop and, and changed out cars. So it doesn't seem well, like there's know, much of a, of, a, of a direction here. There's definitely not much of a direction, that is for sure. But you know that with, with that avalanche, you know, and, and when the driver was in there, they definitely made contact or were talking to this person. That wasn't just random. So they made some sort of deal. They tried, this driver of that SUV tried to get as close as possible. And then you, you saw it. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure what Audi it was, to be precise. I'm sure some of my car buddies are going to really fuck, really ride me on some of that stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, it, it definitely was a nicer high-end Audi. And uh, that, uh, that SUV, that avalanche plowed right into it. Mm -hmm. um, there, I was worried that we, we had lost it. There we go. So we're approaching another major right there, the roadway running out. So he has to make a turn. It looks like he made a turn. He's going to be heading westbound. So he's going to be coming a little bit closer to us. We're basically over the 110 freeway right now. And, uh, but slow, much slower driving. Much slower driving. That's what we can see, say right now. But still running every red light that he comes across. We've been in the wrong side. We've been driving against traffic a couple of times still. So the dangerous driving has not stopped. But uh, at least the speeds have slowed down a little bit. And again, the driver of that vehicle now wanted for aiding and abetting. The passenger inside that vehicle, I believe that's going to be what LAPD was in pursuit for in the beginning. That was the attempted uh, uh, homicide suspect driving that uh, avalanche and right now this is the closest we've been so we're going to see if we can get a better look at the driver whoops mm -hmm. there it is and uh all i can say is that uh well, it, it does appear to be female it does appear to be female behind the wheel so we'll keep an eye on it the best we can but this uh, pursuit continues on and this is as close as we've been to this car since this pursuit started but definitely you know, why why are you doing this and, and Stu, is that back I was tire wondering flat? About that. Yes, yeah. and I would not be surprised if that was a um, was a spike strip, because uh, you had or, mentioned or it earlier on. Or maybe this person hit one of the famous potholes that's that's cropping up all over LA. <laughs> maybe maybe for once a pothole worked in in law enforcement's advantage. I was going to say the pothole did some good, huh? But I, I, I think it might have been actually a spike strip. I'm not sure okay. how, how they would have got the rear and not the front, but I, I think it might have been a spike strip. But you can see it right there. So now that SUV is a little bit disabled, that tire's staying on there for right now. If this continues on, we've seen it so many times in the past. The tire shreds, comes off, he starts ro rolling on the rims. But uh, you can see that uh, just continuing on. We're on Slauson Boulevard, just making, a, making their way. Another right turn that's always the most convenient uh, for for uh, for that suspect, LAPD. They you know they keep an eye on that stuff too, the driving behavior. But uh, right now we're on northbound on Hoover. You can see a lot of the folks in the neighborhood. You can just imagine what all those lights and sirens sound like down there. Oh, seven, sure. be, seven seven officers behind that one car. That's going to be making quite a quite a yeah. lot of noise. There's there's uh, no mistaking like for pedestrians right what's going on and where it's happening. And that's the good thing when you have this many officers in pursuit is is you have this yes. grand show that something's happening and stay out of the way. Wow. Uh, so 
we're, we're keeping an eye on it. Slowing down again. Oh, whoop, 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 Coming whoop. to a stop or not. Almost. This is, we keep getting fooled, Stu. Yeah. They keep changing and, uh, their minds. LAPD, very, very anxious right now. They're keeping an eye at, they're keeping an eye on all the other vehicles that may be in the area. Some something might have been following them. Maybe it's uh, some sort of independent media, maybe not. So they're definitely keeping an eye on, on everything that's going on around them right now. But you saw that slowing down, almost coming to a stop right there. We gotta mark that location, gotta figure out that was on fifty sixth street. So if they make their way back to that area, that might be a spot where that maybe that suspect lives or maybe where the driver of this SUV lives. So uh, that's something to think about. They did come to a they did come to a complete stop because the LAPD opened their doors just for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, though, we're back on Figueroa northbound. We've got one flat tire that's going to be driver's side rear. Uh, it's still holding on, so you're not riding on the rim yet. But it, pretty soon, that tire is going to come apart, and then things are going to start changing up again. But at these slower speeds, uh, you just don't know. But the rear wheels are the drive wheels. So if, if that uh, tire comes apart and it, you know, it might actually make that vehicle almost undrivable. So it might give the LAPD the opportunity to bring this to a stop. Which, hey, is exactly what happened in the original car that we saw, the Avalanche. The tire came off and the riding on the rim, sparks, you can see sparks from the car. And that's, yeah. that's essentially why this, the person bailed and probably got into this SUV who clearly is, a, is an acquaintance or a friend or now an accomplice to this police pursuit. And yeah. we'll see what happens here. But, uh, Stu, I mean, how long can this car go uh, until <laughs> until the rim starts to bend and the wheels fall off? I mean, how long can this thing last? You know, and look that, at how that's close the big police question. are right now. That, that, that's the big question. You can see the number of officers just following it, two, wow. four, six, seven. <laughs> so they have seven They have seven officers right there making a turn. I've got to take a moment and just, uh, because I, I, I've said Dylan's name so many times today, and it might have been a little bit in frustration. I don't want anybody to think anything but the fact that Dylan is one of our best pilots out here flying Sky Fox. He is uh, the most diligent, and he stays up on things the best he can. He is trying to get us the best shots always. Just know that I, I appreciate his, his flying skills and his diligence in the airspace and working with the tower to get us where we need to be to get these shots, even though right now we can't see it again. But that is definitely not his fault. Uh, right now, though, we can see that he's making his way back out onto another major. Let's find out if he made a turn. And I think he did. Yes, he did. He's coming right back at coming us right there. Coming back you guys. And we're going to get it. Yeah, we're going to. It works out for us pretty well. Uh, going to keep an eye on that rear tire. I'm just kind of curious if it's. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely coming oh, apart it's, right it's now. Oh, it's popping off. Yep. Yeah, there it goes. Look at that. And, so that's going to that's gonna create some issues for that driver and, uh, of course, that SUV's performance. And uh, But, you know, like you said, hopefully that's, this is going to be the, what, what kind of brings it to an end safely. You know, you're going to lose that tire. You're going to lose that ability to, to speed up. And, 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 you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it'll bring it to an end. We've seen them in the past uh, talk about uh, how they can do, you know, that they would be able to do a pit maneuver, especially with the tire missing right there. Uh, the tire just beating that truck up. Look at that part oh, of the yeah. bumper coming apart right now. There you go. That was the big part. So now uh, he's basically driving right on that rim. I did hear that they did recover a, a, a weapon. So uh, but oh, they did recover like a weapon. Too. Yes. In like, the, in the, in the uh, avalanche? They, the original They car. said it was I, I'm not 100% on that. I, I heard the words tossed from the vehicle. So maybe maybe it was going on on this one. Maybe the uh, oh the gun. Okay, it was found in it was found in the back of the avalanche. So it was found in the back seat of the avalanche. Oh, okay. So but but it's like you said too. You know, who says that this driver didn't come just with a ride? Maybe he came with a ride and a gun. So, right. You never you know, know. You just you just yeah. You just don't want to be that officer right there making those decisions. You know, so, and, and of course, the officer that is right there, these are the things they're trained for. These are what they what they drill into these mm -hmm. guys to stay alive on the job. And, uh, and believe me, LAPD, they're some of our best. And they are uh, bright and they're trained and they are today really, really get earning their pay. I can guarantee you that, especially that officer that's right behind that vehicle. Oh, With definitely. That, when they were doing those. 
yeah, when they were doing those high speed driving and they were do weaving in and out of traffic, uh, you just gotta, you, you know, we get worried. Just imagine what that driver is doing, that that officer, and also keeping track of what's going on and keeping up on the radios. It, 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 these guys are the guys and gals are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, right now though, can, coming up on Vermont. Oh no, we're on Vermont. Are we on Vermont? So, yes, so Sue, one thing I can confirm for you, and this is through police, is that the two women who bailed the original avalanche that, that the pursuit began in uh, have been taken into custody. Uh, and it is confirmed that this is this this was not a carjacking, as we all were kind of guessing, because it did seem like this car was waiting around for this, this suspect to jump in. Uh, so, yeah, right. clearly they, they do know each other. Do we know if the, if the murder suspect, the attempted murder suspect, is male or female? You know, I don't know. I don't know. And and, and uh, they just said murder suspect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, somebody was saying to me a moment ago about, you know, possibly this was an Uber. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, uh, but uh, but at any rate, uh, now we've got that confirmed that mm -hmm. this is not a carjacking and this person was there on purpose to uh, give that suspect a ride. So uh, right now, though, that ride continues as it would be LAPD in pursuit number of officers right behind it, two helicopters above it from the LAPD along with Skybox. And of course, we're continuing on. The speeds have slowed down, that rear tire missing. You know, it, it, it's not a front wheel, so that's a that's kind of a plus. Uh, luckily, you got a green light at that one, but it's definitely going to slow it down when it speeds up. That, that, and, and that might be a big plus. You know, if this thing can't get out of its own way or if it starts slowing down, LAPD might have that opportunity to do that bit maneuver or they, you know, they're leaving it up to those officers or whoever is the watch commander in charge I, to, that, that are making those calls to to allow it or not to allow it right now though it's a it's a waiting game lapd is doing what they can to keep the public safe uh the driver of that uh, vehicle doing what she can to uh to elude officers and uh the pursuit continues we don't know how long that car is going to keep up with the with those three with three full tires and that one flat on the back and we don't know how much fuel it has or we don't know how much how much look, look, oh no, my no, goodness Come yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, actively going through a crosswalk while people were, were walking through it. I mean, this person has put a number of pedestrians, drivers in harm's way, let's face it, driving on the wrong side of the road, uh, pulling into a parking lot, narrowly missing pedestrians, hitting another car. So this has been far from a tame pursuit. Oh, definitely not tame. There's definitely not tame at all. Uh, and, and, this, and the driver of this vehicle very aggressive especially earlier on we saw those extremely high speeds we saw the those the, those moves where uh you know it, it was it was extremely dangerous uh there was so many many close calls with with this vehicle that avalanche it was driving well it only it, it had the drive of the one of the steering wheels off of it one of the front wheels were off so it made it a little bit more difficult to maneuver but this driver when when that when that suspect got in you saw it that thing tore out of it. Oh yeah, and those that car was really, waiting. Really, really picked up. Yes, and uh, and uh, it, they just keep uh, and it just keeps going. Uh, that driver, I kind of wonder, you know, maybe that person thinking that, you know, maybe this was not the best thing to do on uh, on Good Friday. Yeah, I mean, uh, because like, you uh, mentioned that once that adrenaline wears off, uh, and this person is just left driving, you know, you, can, you sometimes reality kicks in, and you hope it does. For this person you hope yes. that you hope that reality sets in it you know what am i doing why am i doing yeah. this yeah and and it looked like i, I can't save a hundred percent i was just wondering it looked like the uh, like she was on her phone texting just a, just a moment or two ago uh sending out a text or two and and you just hope that they're not planning on doing that same rope-a-dope where they you're trying to get somebody else there because if that's the case then, uh, you know, you just, you know, believe me, LAPD, they might have, that might have happened the, the one time. It's not going to happen again. I can almost guarantee you that. They're, they're going to be on the lookout for something like that. But uh, that vehicle continues to move along right there. You can see it. we got a flat tire. Do, and, we, have, uh, so do we have two LAPD, flat tires or just one? It looks like just one. Close. It looks like the, the passenger, I mean, sorry, the driver's side rear. Mm. That looks like that's the only one that's, yeah, that's definitely the only one that's flat right now. It's going real but, slow. Uh, it, yeah, and, she, you know, she was texting. So I'm just hoping they're not trying to, 
set up another one of those, hey, meet us at, or I'm right. going to get to this corner, or, because, you know, I, I just... I just don't think they're going to be able to pull it off. That's 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 the only thing I can say right now. And you're just dragging somebody else into a, a world of trouble. Yeah, let's let's hope they don't try to upgrade cars again like they did this last time. I mean, there's enough officers yeah. in pursuit to where hopefully that wouldn't they wouldn't try to attempt that again or that wouldn't happen successfully again. But I'm I'm thinking that maybe officers are just waiting for this car to fall apart. Well, you know, that it, it actually is part of it. We always say that with law enforcement, time is on their side. Uh, you know, the longer this pursuit goes, the more chance that they, they're, it might end badly. But in this case, they're, uh, they're talking about, uh, actually, they're talking about a, a Crown Victoria. I, I, yeah, you know what? I don't want to take the chance that, to look. But they're actually talking about one of the units that's in the pursuit to, to slow down and pull over. There's a Crown Victoria that's following the pursuit. A so Crown Victoria that's, that, that's following uh, the pursuit that they're, that they're worried about could be involved somehow? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're worried that this is somebody that's trying to get up and they might possibly do that same type of situation again. So they actually had one of the units from behind that pursuit to actually stop that. Uh, they said it was a... A Crown Victoria. That's all I, get, I I heard right there just now. Uh, so the the helicopter, the airship, the LAPD airship, keeping an eye, eye eye on vehicles that are in the area that are staying nearby. So you know they they're really they're really up on it right now, especially with what the, what happened at the end of that the Avalon. I'm sorry, the at the Avalanche ch Avalanche chase where this uh, suspect jumped in the backseat of this car. Uh, they're continuing on. I guess they are continuing. Uh, I'm just kind of looking out the window. So they're continuing westbound. So it's going to make it more and more difficult for us to uh, keep an eye on it. Hopefully they make a U-turn, come back there, come back to where we are. But right now, this pursuit continues, and uh, LAPD, look at look at the number of cars that are following it, and yes. uh, of course. We're talking about at least seven police LAPD cruisers that are following the suspect right now. Is, yep. is do you think is the added added presence? This is you said this is unusual. You don't see things like this happen very yes. often. What could be possibly the reason in your in your estimate? I know we don't know for sure, but I mean, is it because the person was was armed before, wanted the for attempted the, murder? The person was armed. I'm sure that's part of it. The other part of it is the the fact that. He had this person meet them, so they, they're they probably thinking, you know, where is this going to end? Maybe this person drives to a place where there's a number of people that are, you know, friendly to that suspect. And so they just need more officers to be there at that termination. That I believe that that's probably part of it. But I am hearing them talk about that suspect, the driver of this vehicle, uh, on the phone. And they are concerned about this uh, another another meet as it would be like they're going to meet the, somebody somewhere and then uh, they're going to try to switch vehicles or do whatever they're going to do lapd is going to do everything in their power to not allow that to happen i can guarantee you that mm -hmm. but uh, right now making our way in, in the south la area very residential area and there we go sorry was looking at a street too far north but uh it and just keeping an eye out right there, yeah. see if they go through here or they make a turn. There they are. Was that them? Yeah, that was them. So that actually that vehicle that we were, were looking at was actually a vehicle paralleling this. And that's what we were talking about earlier on. They're going to they're gonna have LAPD officers nearby paralleling the pursuit just in that general area wherever it is. So when it does come to an end, they have extra officers there. Yeah, and once again, you're, this person's in a residential neighborhood. Uh, so I, you know, if, if you're in this area, if you're watching, if you're watching this all unfold right now from the comfort of your homes, please stay inside. Uh, do not go out. Uh, and and, and <laughs> because we've seen a couple of people, right? We've seen a couple of people standing near yes. their homes, and, and and we don't, we don't, we just don't know. We just don't know if this person who's driving is armed uh, with with anything but a cell phone. Uh, we, we just don't know at this point. So it's better to be safe than sorry and just stay inside. And if you are, if you are, as we try to get this, you know, shot back up and running again, but if you are just joining us, this, this police pursuit began in the LAX Inglewood hey, uh, neighborhood. Can uh, we wander south? Yeah. With an avalanche, uh, we were told there were three occupants inside this avalanche. And then 
uh, led police on a lengthy chase. The suspect bailed from the car and into a waiting SUV, leaving behind a weapon in the back seat of that avalanche. Two other women were told tried to escape from that avalanche and were arrested. So they're in custody right now. And then that that SUV, that waiting SUV, we're told this was not a carjacking. This was actually somebody who was waiting for that suspect started gunning it down. Mostly secondary roads, right, Stu? This has not taken us to the to the highway just yet. Where am I wrong? We have not seen anything. We have not seen anything uh, as far as the freeways ever with these mm-hmm. vehicles, with the uh, second one or the first one. They've been staying on. Uh, they've been staying on the streets. I, I just heard them talking about Century and Van Ness. You probably can see right there as well. We got the streets up right there, so we, we're we're trying to we're trying to locate exactly where he's at. But uh, approaching. The, hang on. So they're. Okay. So they're. Yeah. So you're. He's, so you're trying to get. Century approaching Western. There they are, right there. So. They're, they're making that turn, so they're going southbound on Western mm-hmm. right now. So they're still heading over towards the 105 and once again. But we, like you said, we've not seen them on any of the freeways at all uh, this afternoon. So that vehicle continues to go, even with the three tires and the one, uh, the one flat on the driver's side rear. Uh, LAPD still behind it. And uh, you can see right there, as I'm, 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 I'm lacking on my, on my skills. Sorry about that. No, it's, uh, it's, trying to stay a little bit ahead of it. Yeah. But uh, we get a glimpse of it every now and then through the buildings. I know this is not the shots that we usually see with these pursuits, but it's been staying in the South LA area, and uh, with these new rules that, uh, you know, that, that's that's a that's a that's another story for another time. But. Uh, we are we we're, we're held at bay, and uh, we basically have to sit out here and try to get the shots that we can. But uh, they're making their way southbound right now. 108th is what I heard just a second ago. So we we'll keep it, try to keep ahead of them, and uh, see if we can watch them pop out somewhere down towards the south. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm just wondering, Stu, if there's if there's a thought behind you mentioned that the possible use of spike strips, but wouldn't wouldn't more than one uh, tire be flat if that were the case? I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, let's get back, though, to that, that original video while he tries to get a shot of this suspect. This is kind of where this chase picked up, if we could get to that video of the, yes, the, yeah, the, the yes, the, this, this shot right here. This is near Inglewood. This was West Century Boulevard that this happened, uh, where the, yeah, the, the suspect bails out of the avalanche, which was broken down already, and then hops into that waiting SUV. I think police right now are worried the same thing's going to happen again because we've seen this pattern, right? I mean, this, this avalanche kept going essentially around in circles through, through these neighborhoods until it came to a stop, and then this happened. So you're kind of hoping that uh, history doesn't repeat itself right now, but then you see that car, that SUV, driving into the Bank of America parking lot, narrowly missing several pedestrians, cutting through that parking lot and continuing on. Uh, th- we are dealing with a, an attempted murder suspect, and we're told that this person had left a weapon in the back seat of the avalanche before they bailed out and, and took the SUV that was waiting. And we're back with Stu. So he is, this person is on the highway? Where are we right now? No, not on the highway. We just crossed over the 105 freeway. We're going to be back in the Inglewood area. Uh, He's he's been staying on Western. We still have to stay a little bit farther away. Uh, You know, if it it gets farther south, that's going to be good for us because then at least we might be able to get a little bit closer. Uh, Right now, they're still southbound on Western as the last 122. So we're looking in the right spot, but it's just so far away and out at a distance. And you got so much trees out there, but uh, somewhere right there in that area. There you go. We got, got a glimpse of a LAPD cruiser. Yeah, we're in the Hawthorne area. And uh, making our way southbound. And uh, just trying to keep ahead of it and use that end of the lens technology. There we go. So, you know, th- this is one of those things where if you were looking out the window of Skybox, you, would, you, we, we, you could not even make out where this is, even if I tried to point it out to you. Yeah. But you can see right there a lot of traffic. And uh, let me see if they're going through or they made a turn. Looks like they're going southbound, going 
keep it on going keep it on keep it on so uh they're they're continuing southbound on western so we're making our way probably into gardena by now as uh we're we're, we're staying on western continuing southbound where this where they're taking us well we're going to find out when we get there that's the best i can say i used to say that to my kids all the time uh but right now that driver is keeping the officers at bay they did have some suspicious vehicle following them for a little bit they are concerned that this driver might be trying to contact somebody else and they might be able to do another one of these swap of cars uh, the LAPD is going to do what they can to make sure that that does not happen. Uh, right now, though, making their way, looks like we got another major coming up, but it seems like cars are stopping, so they got a red light. And it, we're continuing on, southbound western, and uh, definitely in the Gardena area right now. LAPD, they've been chasing this car, well, this one, since that swap. Uh, but uh, this started, I, gosh, I don't even know I how know. long ago. I know, I've, I've lost all concept of time right now, Sue. Yes. Definitely, I mean, this, this pursuit's been going on for at least how many, 40 minutes, I think? 40 minutes. That That, that is a long, an hour and a half. long an hour LA, and a half. Uh, LA standards. That, that, yeah, that is definitely long for LA standards. And you can see that that vehicle just continues to drive. That one tire is flat. Was it a spike strip? Well, you know what? I don't know if we're ever really going to find out. Or was it a pothole? Don't really know. But I can tell you that, that is, that's the only big plus right now for this chase is that they are down to three good tires on that car. Uh, you can see the sheriff's well, department yeah, helping there's, out uh, and right. uh, just kind of Posted blocking up traffic. The corner there. Because, yeah, and you know, this is this is what they do. Uh, you know, law enforcement, they want to keep uh, they want to keep the public safe. I can tell you sheriff's units probably are going to be in the area as well now that we are out of the LAPD area. So they're going to be leaning on their brethren in uh, in brown as it would be because they wear uh, those tan uniforms. But, uh, you know, we're making our way south on Western. We're in the Gardena area. This has been we have had a little bit of a tour of the Los Angeles area for sure. Uh, but this uh, chase continues. Maybe we can get a little bit better look at that driver right now. It looks like both hands are on the wheel. Oh, you know? look, oh so, look, they're at the nines uh, and threes, that? Stu, like we always advise. Safe driving, right? Yeah. Yeah. Safe driving. Very, you can see she's very concerned about uh, about people around her. Of course. And, of course, uh, of but course right she now, is. <laughs> of course she is. But at least she's not on the phone because we definitely saw her on the phone earlier on. So, yeah, you did see did her on the phone. Was she texting? Was she uh, was she calling someone? Was she texting actively while she was, you know, being pursued by, by at least seven squad cars? Uh, <laughs> okay. I honestly, sorry about that. I was fighting a little bit of a cold. But, yeah, you know, you just don't know. I, I would venture to say probably texting just because uh, the window's down. If, and if she was on a speaker, what are you going to hear with that window down? So right now, though, this uh, pursuit just continues. This driver's still just driving. Uh, it looks like we're just doing a little bit of a weaving around there. It's, whoa, a little bit of a yeah. hard turn. And, and. Those are th those are the things that we just don't want to see. And now she's going the wrong way in traffic. Uh, a lot of folks, uh, you know, they hear those lights and sirens. They are coming to a stop. That's the that's that's what they have. You know, that's what the public does. And uh, it's actually a really good thing, especially when it's a chase like this. Right now, speeds have uh, really really slowed down, and uh, and that's a plus as well. But uh, we're going to keep an eye on what's going on, and uh, of course, right now. It's just a slow drive down Western as we're making our way south from the L.A. into Gardena. And uh, let's see if we make our way down to Palos Verdes because that I think that's where Western ends, right, is down in the Palos mm -hmm. Verdes area. Yeah, I mean, this, this you know, rear tire might be working to their advantage, right? Uh, because at some point, this car has got to slow down. And That was nice. Well, that was real classy. real sweet, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. classy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, at this point, I don't think that that person cares about much of anything. Uh, right now, yeah, but yeah, th like like I was saying, I, I think that the rear tire being out and disabled might be working to cops' advantage at least because the, this person cannot go that fast. Eventually, I would have to imagine you keep driving like this, and you're go you're driving on the rim. Sparks are going to come up, and your car is going to be completely disabled. That will happen yeah. at some point in the near future. Yeah, I'm just amazed that this wheel is holding on. I mean, it it appears that it has some uh, some rubber still stuck to the. It seems like the the tire part is gone, but the sidewalls are still there. Um, but uh, it, it is just amazing that it is just holding on as well as it is. Uh, right now, though, 
this card, you know, they're going. I'm, I'm, let me let me pull up the uh, speedometer real quick. We had it down because we were on the at the end of our lens and stuff like that. Yeah, that's about right. We're we're going about 45 miles an hour, 43 miles an hour. That seems to be about right. And these are the speeds that uh, that uh, LAPD has been talking about as well. So that's a big plus. The, the, the you know those high speeds have slowed down. LAPD they're not they're not slowing down. They've got a number of officers still in, behind it. And I think maybe one of the reasons, too, why they keep getting an, an extra officer at the end is because of that fact that they are worried that this person might be trying to get a hold of somebody. Somebody might be following them to try to get up closer. And, uh, and we heard it. I don't know what came of it, but they did stop a vehicle that was trailing the pursuit earlier well, they would on. Have to so, get, uh, they would have know, to get around the parade of seven, was, uh, seven that, police you know, SUVs that, that to get to that suspect. Uh, intent, or was it? Uh, somebody or maybe an independent news person but uh, right now it just continues to move along down there and uh, I'm going to stay a little bit wider <laughs> on the shots for right now and the pursuit <laughs> continues but at least the speeds are down to what we can at least call normal speeds uh, 35 miles an hour as we're coming up on another red light mm -hmm. and at least she slowed down just a little bit yeah, I, I'm. Well, you're wondering what, what this woman's relationship is to the suspect. Obviously, an acquaintance. Obviously, she was waiting on standby to pick this person up. And you're hearing there was a, a Crown Vic that was uh, possibly following this police pursuit in re, in relation to the, the suspect. Maybe trying to pull what we saw with this SUV, another awaiting vehicle. Hopefully, that doesn't happen. Making. Uh, are we going against traffic right now? Yep, we are. Okay. So now this SUV is all over the road. Stu, can you hear me? I don't know if you can, but yeah, we're going down. We're near Western yes. Avenue right no, now. Yeah. No, so, I don't. Okay. So we no, have you back? No, I don't. All right, so we are following this police pursuit that began near LAX Inglewood area. This has been a, a fairly wild pursuit so far, I have to say, as we wait for Stu to, to come back to us. I mean, he has a pre fairly clear shot of what this SUV is doing right now. Uh, we don't have much information in terms of who the suspect is. We do know they're wanted for attempted murder. Uh, has been, this pursuit's been happening now for almost two hours as we watch them speed down streets. Uh, but this began near LAX Inglewood area. Uh, it started off in a separate car. Uh, originally, the suspect was one of three occupants in an avalanche. Uh, that avalanche was being pursued by a number of officers to the point where the front tire actually gave out and the, the suspect bailed from the car because it came to a stop uh, into this waiting SUV leaving behind a weapon in the back seat of that avalanche uh, and then just started gunning it down all these secondary roads. I have not seen this, this SUV take the highway yet. This is, these are all been secondary roads. And Stu, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but as far as the neighborhood goes, are we, are we circling again or have we really left this area? Uh, you know what? I, I can, I, I can hear you, but, and now I have, uh, now I actually have a, uh mixed minus issues i can hear myself mm. on the radio as well uh I, we are staying on van ness we're making, we just made another turn you saw that craziness right there uh, she got off of western and then made her way onto 190th for a little bit driving on the wrong side of the road weaving around a little bit now we're making our way back over towards western don't know if that's the plan or not but you can see that vehicle continues to drive LAPD, they still right there behind her. Uh, that driver has that suspect from that earlier pursuit in the back seat, so now they're in pursuit of her as well. This uh, SUV keeps just keeps on going, and then you know what? As long as she keeps those speeds down to what we've been seeing, it's going to be okay. I, I would venture to say. Hopefully, there's not somebody not paying attention, and that you know when she's running a red light, and that will uh, crash into into her vehicle as it would be. 
Right now, though, LAPD right there behind it. Looks like we're making our way over back over towards Western. There it is. And we're continuing southbound on Western. So there must be a reason why they're staying on Western Boulevard. So because they were on Western, they got off, and now they're continuing southbound back on to Western uh, Avenue. It, you know, this is one of those ones where, you know, I, I would venture to say that that driver is going to drive that SUV till it does not drive anymore. Yeah. Meaning it you know, might get stuck somewhere or they were, you know, run out of gas or maybe lose another tire, whatever it is, that suspect is, the driver is not going to give up. They're going to wait for that vehicle to give up before they do anything. Uh, LAPD, they're still, you know, well out of their area, but now we're in the Harbor Gateway area. So I think if we keep on going south, they, they do have a little bit of LAPD down this way as well. Uh, especially down in the San Pedro area. But I don't know if we're going to go that far. But right now, we're definitely in the uh, <clears throat> in the Harbor Gateway. So uh, it's going to be sheriffs in this area as well. But uh, LAPD definitely in pursuit. I know the other law enforcement, they're going to be nearby. This driver just just being batty this uh, this. Uh, this afternoon, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, just I'm not being gonna behind the wheel, him. just doing what she needs to do to yeah. keep those officers that far behind her. But in, in the end, hopefully nobody gets hurt. But you know that this is going to come to an end with uh, those suspects going into custody. Yeah, and you hope that it comes to a peaceful end as well because this, this pursuit's been happening for some two hours now. And I, it's, it's so can you and I was asking you this earlier. I don't know if you could hear me, but this is this pursuit has sort of stayed within the, the same area right it doesn't necessarily seem like this person it has a direction <laughs> you know i i heard the more pedest more pedestrians yeah. i heard the question about uh about staying in the same area you know we've watched we've watched pursuits sometimes take us on tours of south la we get on mm -hmm. freeways we go way out east we come back uh, and etc. this one was hanging out in the lax area inglewood area for the longest and then made its way into South Los Angeles and now making our way well south of all of that, making our way uh, ba basically towards the uh, Ranchos Palos Verdes area or Torrance, depending upon how far south we're going to go. Uh, LAPD, whoop, it looks like we're making a turn. Maybe there is a destination because this seems to be a pretty random uh, random turn right here. We're on 122nd Street. Looks like a uh, very residential neighborhood. So uh, LAPD, they're going to stay behind it. You know, they have information about what's going on. A lot, of, little bit of traffic here. Is, when we get on these residential roads, I always get worried. But there we go. So we're not staying on 122nd. Now we're on Harvard. But, uh, you know, the, the, what, where this person goes in the end, really, you know, we might figure it out. We might not. But LAPD, they just want to bring this to an end. They just want to take those two people into, into custody right now. That passenger wanted for the first pursuit and possibly a, 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 an attempted homicide. And then the driver of this one who's basically aiding and abetting. That's uh, that's pr the big charge that's going to be on there. And, you know, and evading being the, mm -hmm. the pursuit. Uh, but right now, that vehicle is still holding on with the three full tires. The one uh, shredded one on the back, LAPD in force down there. You can see a number of them. One of the LAPD helicopters overhead, they're making the calls as well, giving these officers on the ground the heads up at least about what traffic is doing when they get through these intersections. But uh, right now, I'm pretty much like everybody else. You just want to see this come to an end safely and those two suspects go into custody. Yes, do you think of it this way? We have we have been on this pursuit for so long that not just one, but two cars have broken down or are actively breaking down, I should say. Yeah, you really do hope that this comes to a peaceful end because, you know, you, what's the game plan after this car does, you know, finally come to a stop? And and you're hoping that uh, that it nothing happens as a result of this because this person has been weaving in and out of parking lots We've seen them go the wrong way down down roads, putting a lot of people in harm's way, even though not going fast, but still putting a lot of people in harm's way. Making another turn. Well, yeah, and I'm just scratching my head on this one because it really doesn't seem like this this person, yeah, you know, again, they're almost I'm, looking I'm for open roads. I'm having a lot of issues uh, just trying to... Uh, to, to hear you yeah. uh, right now. But uh, what I can say is that, uh, you know, the LAPD, when this thing comes to an end, they are going to treat this as armed suspects inside that vehicle. Even though, uh, 
you know, we heard them earlier on saying that they did have one gun in custody. They, they retrieved that out of that aval uh, avalanche. That was the first vehicle that they were in that pursuit with. And uh, but it's like you said, you know, you just don't know. Maybe this person had two guns. Maybe this person, uh, you know, the driver of this vehicle brought a weapon. You just don't know. But the fact that this uh, the suspect is wanted for. Uh, well, here we go. Things There's might be changing up a little right bit. Now. That vehicle slowing down, yeah. slowing down, slowing down. She's probably thinking to myself, should have got gas before I picked this guy up. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see what's going on up. The door's opening up. Okay. The door's opening up. Oh, 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 oh. oh that wow, that was that was. Bailing out of a moving wow, vehicle. Okay. There's somebody and, else there uh, trying to make a run for it. He's out running. People are trying to make a run for it. There we go. And uh, making his foot. way through the houses this way. We're going to keep an eye on him. Somebody running out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Did you see that? That, that, that was a, some some civilian. Yeah. Was just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I don't blame him. Uh, just keep it running there. Well, you know, I, I'm getting tired just watching this guy run. This is exhausting, and he's just keeping it up. Now, LAPD, I can tell you that they are they are calling it out right now. I'm going to say it a little bit wider. You can see a number of those officers running right there. You'd think one of them would have brought the car. But uh, at any think. rate, making a turn. Hopefully he doesn't try to get into somebody's house. Oh, please don't get oh, into somebody's house. Oh, please tell me you know this uh, person. Let's get a little yeah. closer. Let's get a, he's moving around. He's moving around. Up. Oh, he got got folks getting out of the way. Uh you know, maybe this is somebody's house that they know. I don't maybe know. not. We're going to see if that garage door is open. Uh, officers definitely have their guns out. Uh, but you can see that uh, the, the residents of that uh, of this uh, of this house knew what was going on pretty much. They didn't seem any kind of excited about what was happening right there. Just kind of leisurely walking away. I'm going to kind of get a grab a grab a picture of them real quick. Yeah, they're probably just like, oh man. Yeah. So. Uh, definitely, guns are out, and uh, I'm going to stay a little bit wider. I, okay. I really have a feeling this is going to end well. He's got his arms up. But, uh, so I just it, don't I mean, want to see anything happen, unfortunate, right now. We just don't know. But uh, this uh, suspect definitely right. has their hands out. Yeah, but like this I is, said, this is, this they is are going to treat the most... this like it is an armed suspect. Yeah. There is no doubt about that. But this is the uh, most volatile part run, of the, you know, of this the pursuit, too. got to be winded. LAPD, they must be winded as well. But they've got to keep their composure. There they go. There okay. they go. There they go. Wow. Making that swarm. move. Taking this guy into custody. All right. But I still saw one person actually try to run away. I don't know if that person's in custody. We're going to have to check on that. Uh, but the, there were two people inside that car. One of them bailed. Is that a woman? That's right. And... The, the 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 females the driver of that vehicle mm -hmm. uh, she got out kind of walked for a little bit and I can almost guarantee you they took that guy uh, that that woman into custody almost yeah. right away yeah. we can double check but right now this uh, person is going into custody right here on Kwood this is going to be on Kwood the twenty two thousand nine hundred block of Kwood that's where this uh, suspect in custody now after a long run couple of vehicles. And then that unfortunate crash into that really expensive Audi. That was a beautiful car. That Hopefully was a beautiful that, uh, car. that driver's going to be okay. I'm sure he's not injured, but uh, that car definitely took a, took a nice hit from that avalanche earlier on. But this suspect now in custody after a long, long pursuit. Well, yeah, that pursuit was almost two hours. I'm, I, I don't know about you, but I'm certainly grateful that this, this whole thing came to a peaceful end. He, it appeared that he surrendered peacefully. So that is some good news as a result of all of this. And uh, for what it's worth, nobody hurts in this, in this chase. It didn't look like it, at least. It uh, that yeah, that was a, I would believe that was a woman driver that got out earlier on and uh, was taken into custody. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, suspect from the back seat. But uh, but yeah, definitely was a very very long pursuit. Sky Fox is a thirsty bird for sure. We're we're really getting close to our two hour limit. Hopefully we can have enough fuel to get back to Van Nuys. But this is the type of pursuit that we love to cover out here the, for sure. Uh, nobody injured and uh, very little damage to any any you know any property. But uh, definitely nobody hurt today and that is that is the big plus all right so if you if you are yeah if you are just joining us this nearly two hour long 
All right, that was coverage there by the great uh, Fox 11 in Los Angeles with Stu Mundell high up above. We appreciate it there as uh, this one nearly going two hours for this police chase. We want to show you just one of the, uh, there's the major highlight here that came in the middle of that chase. Let's go to it right now here on Live Now from Fox and you'll be able to see what happened. This was the lone uh, really big highlight there of uh, the suspect and others in the car uh, as they were able to bail out. But one of the suspects, look at this, as the bailout moment happens, somebody they know is in that SUV and they go right into the car and then uh, the SUV darts off and it's another chase as it continues on but uh, in that SUV really really something and we showed it to you live raw and unfiltered here no commercial breaks during this time we, we went nearly two hours uh, bringing you this coverage right here on live now from Fox everybody